Howdy, I'm Matt and in this video we are going to be unboxing the Sonic model HD Flying Wing. Now some of you may already know this wing because it's been, come, it's been produced before uh, and there need two, at least two other known names. The first one is the ready-made RC uh, Waco or Waco wing uh, and also Hobby King had a, uh, their version as well uh, called the Sky Ray as well. Now, also, no, Austin, one of the guys which we fly with, I'm sure you've seen him in the videos, uh, he absolutely loves his Sky Ray as well, and uh, we went on a big trek to go and rescue it uh, on Sunday. So, uh, yeah, some good things which have been said about this model, to say the least. Uh, right now, it's retailing for $75 US from Banggood, uh, plus, I think, about $7 shipping. The good thing for us is that this means that there is some competition amongst the suppliers. Okay, so let's get this off straight away. You can buy, uh, well, if Hobby King still had it, uh, you could buy the Sky Ray, you can uh, get the, the similar version from Ready Made RC, uh, and now also on Banger. This is fantastic because basically it's all coming out the same mold. The mold which made this probably made exactly the same models which uh, Ready Made RC and also Hobby King uh, also did as well. So Sonic Model, which is a separate company to, to Banggood, uh, have, have got hold of the moulds uh, and then they've started manufacturing them again, which is really good news because apparently these fly absolutely like a peach. Now, before we go any further, I do want to stress this model was bought out of my own money for my own abuses. Uh, something which I'd like to be 100% clear about, the same as there are any links in the video description or affiliate links, so if you use them, you will be supporting this channel. So with that said, this box literally arrived this morning. It's It's got, a, well, I'm not going to turn it right around because it's got my details on the top. It's actually survived the journey pretty well, all, consi all considering. Uh, and yeah, it was delivered by Parcel Force 24. Mr. Parcel Force uh, was here, or Parcel Force 48, should I say, uh, was here this morning, uh, about quarter past eight in the morning. Uh, and that's happy days. This one has been and survived its journey by the looks of it. Uh, so yeah, you're seeing this as I'm seeing it, literally just got the box here, we'll get it out, uh, we'll try and put it together as best we can uh, and have a nose. Now, the one curiosity is, will it come, oh, hello, it's come with a spare nose, that's happy days. One thing which I did, I do know is that you can get a clear nose, which is the bit which I didn't know whether we would be getting or not as part of this kit. So I'm just going to get straight in this box uh, and get all the bits out and then we'll take a look. Uh, together at what we've got. Now, I will be setting this one up for FPV. I don't know if I'll be sticking a flight controller or whatever in there. Uh, it is a 1.2 meter wingspan, uh, so a hefty size. Uh, that sounds like glass fiber, but I've no been known to be wrong. And uh, as I'm always curious, I'm here looking for the multimeter. Apologies, I've just wandered off the screen. Uh, and the reason for that. Uh, is I'm curious whether this is glass fibre or carbon fibre and it's carbon fibre, I take that back, so it do does conduct electricity uh, so we are doing, we've got a carbon fibre main spar all nicely and neatly packaged we get some red stickers stickers, not a big fan of stickers so we'll stick those out of the way uh, hello we do get a really decent, and I'm here flicking, I'll show you in a, in a second. Uh, we do get a really nice colour manual. I mean, that's, that's a really nice colour manual which they've got. And the, the photographs are in colour, they, um, they might be looking like black and white uh, on the screen, uh, but they really are colour, and yeah, they've just stapled it up at the top and nice paper. And someone's actually spent some time uh, on making it so. Happy days, in that case, a manual sometimes apparently comes in handy. I'll stick that over in the box to um, not read later. Uh, anyway, let's get these wings open and take a nose. Now, the suggested motive for this wing is a 2212, uh, 2200 kV motor with a 6x4 prop. To be honest, I probably won't be using a 6x4 or a 2200 kV or even a 2300 kV motor. Uh, for this one, I will be going for a slower, or sorry, a lower KV uh, motor. Uh, and the reason for that is that I've got wings here which go fast. Uh, do I want another wing which goes stupidly fast? Will it compete with any of those wings? The answer is no, not really. 
uh, and instead I will go for a mid-range KV, somewhere around, uh, anywhere from about 1200 to 1400 KV, uh, and uh, that's the kind of setup which I'll go for, I think, for this one. It really kind of depends what I've got uh, in the, the motors box here. Now, as many of you already know, I way prefer purchasing the kit versions uh, rather than a plug and play kit. And, ooh, shit, broke it. Um, just spewed its guts out down the bottom. Uh, I do way much prefer purchasing a kit rather than a plug and play version. So, and my reasoning for that is that if you're not um, up to speed with motors and speed controllers and servos and things like that, a plug and play kit version is probably actually really good value for money for you because you get all the parts you need and you off you go. Uh, whereas for me, uh, slightly more experienced, is that I would rather choose the parts which go into my model uh, and I want maximum control over everything. And what I'll do for you is that in the video description, once I've been in and decided the setup for this wing, uh, is that I'll list all the parts which I'll be using in mine uh, so that you can go, oh, Matt's using those servos, which I can tell you they'll be the Tower Pro MG90S metal geared ones, uh, which are super cheap and really good. I'll be using those in there, uh, and the, when I decide on the exact motor uh, ESC combo, I will update the video description for you. So do press the show more button underneath this video uh, to see the setup which I'm going to be going with. So with that said, let's just go and put this to one side. Uh, and that was just literally my, no my note here about the differences between plug and play and, uh, what do we call it, uh, kits. I just prefer kits. Uh, there's no two ways about it, I just like the extra control uh, which you get with having uh, a kit. Now, I have no idea what that little piece of foam is over on the top uh, at all. Hey ho, uh, it looks like we do need some glue uh, to stick the swing together. Uh, I am personally thinking you who pour for this one. Uh, the reason being is to. I, 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 I tell you why I'm, I'm thinking you who pour. Uh, is number one, I've got loads of it, and the reason why I got loads of it is that I did order some uh, from eBay, and uh, I had three sent to me, and then the next day another three turned up. Hey ho! So it probably will be you who pour. Uh, it's a contact adhesive. It's ready available in pretty much any country. Uh, you just scuff up the surface, and again, this model is not absolutely rinsed in mold release. It's shiny. Don't get me wrong, but uh, it is. Yeah, it's it's, it's a nice molding. It's not rinsed in mold really so you, some of them they feel really oily and that's where they put too much mold release in it I think it's just exactly the right amount they've been put in here that's for sure uh, so the fuselage just come in two parts I don't think it's going to be a complex build all we're going to be doing uh, is just getting a piece of wood sticking in a couple of pieces of foam together uh, on the top coming back to my point the you who uh, pour is that it's a contact adhesive so what I'll do on these sand the surfaces where uh, it needs to be glued, put some glue on there, put the surfaces together, bash them around a little bit, wiggle them around, take them apart, and then slip them back together after about five, 10 minutes once the uh, contact adhesive has had time to go off a little bit. Now, massive tip there for using Yoohoo Pour. In fact, let me just grab a tube so you know what it looks like. That's Yoohoo Pour. It gets its nickname of Yoohoo Piss Pour because uh, if you do get some spill out from the sides, it will to turn yellow uh, in the sunshine. So uh, just be aware of that. There are other glues available. Uh, I don't think Yoohoo Power is suitable for this. It normally melts most foams. This is an EPO foam, not EPP. Uh, so yeah, it will have to be Yoohoo Pour. Uh, there are loads of other glues which you could use. Hot glue, potentially, but again, that's quite a big surface to get a lot of hot glue down in one go and then stick it together. You'd probably end up mel 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 melting most of the foam when you do that. Uh, nice big motor mount at the back. Now I couldn't really, I, I did have a look around on the internet to see if there are any like bad points about the wing and from the owners which I've heard which have uh, flown the, the Hobby King Skyray and the Ready Made RC Wait, Wacko, whatever it was called, uh, there's no real like major complaints. It's a well behaved model. That's the, that's the best thing which I'm again this is nice for us coming into this at a later time because Number one, it's got cheaper. Number two, it's uh, it's a proven model, which I think is great news. So while while other companies have given up, maybe get, get, have their lifespan on it, the mold's still available. The molding is absolutely fantastic on it. It's not 
Uh, I've seen it like uh, I've got a S800 down there where they've released a, a new version, or well, they say a new version, it's a grey version 2, it's like a version 1.2, and that one is showing signs of the mould having extensive wear in it. Uh, whereas this one is perfect. So I'm looking at the nose cone uh, in here. Uh, the, yeah, they've trimmed it off on the edges, but the, the moulding's absolutely fantastic on it, so it hasn't hit the end of its life. Oh, one thing to note is that this nose cone area does go on with some magnets. I'm normally not a fan of magnets for nose cones and things like that, but after seeing Austin's with his, I've seen how strong the magnets are, and I don't think they're going anywhere anytime soon, because uh, I've seen the way which Austin flies his. Uh, this wing does have uh, vertical stabilizers on it, uh, and apparently these little rudders are completely useless. But what they, uh, if you did want to set them up, apparently they make really good air brakes. So if you make them squeeze together, uh, is that you can set them up as air brakes just to get some of the pace off. And again, this is nice that uh, I'm able to do a little bit of research beforehand. Uh, and of course, if you do have, if you've owned a model similar to this before. Please do share your experiences with everybody else, and you can do that in the comments section underneath, your, underneath this video, because I, for one, would value your feedback. And again, remember, this is one of my motivations behind this channel, is because let's go and buy the model, let's go and find out if it's any good, and let's share the experiences together as RC pilots, because most of the time, there's a lot of bullshit reviews out here. So if this one's shite, you're gonna find out about it, but I kind of already know, and I'm pretty sure you've already worked out in the back of your head now, uh, is that Matt's saying it's a model, it's a proven model, which has already been named before. Uh, his mate, Austin, has flown it, he likes it, and I know Austin likes it, he is and really, really does like it. Uh, and uh, with that said, it's going to stick some wings on it. So, yeah, it is going to be a straightforward build. All you're going to do is stick a couple of wings on. Uh, the wings... Uh, to note is that you do get these plastic pieces to hold the wings on, which normally, if I'm honest, I would frown on. I, I genuinely would frown on. You've got a little bag of goodies in there, a load of magnets, some uh, some control horns, uh, and a load of plastic bits, which I've got here. I'm just seeing if I can... Yeah, a load of plastic bits, which are labelled. I don't know which way around they're supposed to go, but uh, whatever way they are, I'm sure I've picked them out the wrong way round. Uh, is that you can take set, take the model apart, you can um, have it so that the model will come to into separate pieces. Now, I don't know why that's not going on properly. I'm not going to force it for the sake of uh, a few moments on the camera. Uh, the main spire will go in there. I assume it just needs pushing up. Uh, again, like I said, I don't want to force it. I'd rather do it in... Is it going to go? No, I'm not forcing it at all. Uh, is that I'll do that on my own time afterwards. Uh, the fins are held on uh, with, again, plastic joints. But then again, I've seen Austin's flying and the winglets are still on here, so it can't be that bad. Now, the one bit which, well, there's two bits which I like. Number one, they have been and provided a second nose cone, which is always good news because uh, it does have a bit of a nose on the front of her, to be honest, uh, and it will cut, scuff the grain. And having a second one, is happy days because the one thing which I noticed about Austin's Sky Ray uh, is that most of the model was fine considering it had been in its fair share of hedges and yes Austin I'm talking to you and I've seen you flying uh, and the nose had just basically crumpled up uh, and it had seen better days so a nice touch they've been included a second one now we do get do get a clear dome again going from the feedback from other previous pilots which have owned this model and this setup before is that the dome will, oh there's two little screws there, I don't want to lose those, uh, the dome will, and I need to get this right, it will end up getting scratched over time, and I'm guessing that's what those two pieces are there for, let me just go, stay again, let me stick a knife, nice strong foam, uh, I think that's because it's right on the joint, yeah, so there's the dome area, which again, just a little bit of glue, uh, the dome would then fit on the end. We got a plywood ring for that as well. Uh, there was a little bag there with some screws which I managed to lose already. Uh, and then you can put your FPV camera inside the actual nose cone, mount that on the front. Uh, so and maybe you put a little pan or tilt camera in there, something a little project which I'm working on for a different model. 
uh, and you could have pan and tilt with just a fixed camera in there uh, and it would save your camera getting fogged up etc etc. The one comment which I have heard, I'll get to my point, is that these, no, these clear cones, they will scratch over time. Uh, good news is, uh, is that you can get replacement ones and if you look them up, you just do a, uh, a Google search, there's many people which have come up with alternatives like using bottle, uh, bottles and things like that uh, as a front dome to the model. So I'm going to wrap up now because I think that's what which I really need to cover with you. It's really curious, the only thing which I don't know right now is what that little top lid there does. Uh, I don't know what that is for. Uh, if you know what that's for, let me know in the comments section underneath the video. Uh, I'm curious on what that one's bit. Why we got a section there which pops out. Besides that, huge battery capacity in here. The idea is that you put, uh, you you can put a battery in the nose section down here. You take the nose off, stick the battery in, you can have, you, there's plenty of room for a flight controller back here, you'd fit iNav in here, you'd fit an FY in here, you'd fit an Eagle Tree Vector, uh, very, yeah, loads and loads of cap space in here. Uh, in fact, let me just go and grab a battery so you can put it into proportion so uh, you know what it kind of looks like. So that's just a, a standard Turnigy 2200 3S. Uh, if I put that in the nut, well, I'll tell you what, if I take these top pieces off, move that out of the way, yeah, so you normally you've got your battery up here in the nose, you'll see that kind of the battery, the space which you've got back here, uh, you will get a decent sized battery. I do have a ruler here uh, in the front, uh, two inches gap in there, so that's a fair old sized battery uh, which you can fit in the nose. Obviously you could cut a piece out if you wanted to put even a bigger battery in there. Um, but yeah, you can fit a decent sized battery in there. There is room for a flight controller. Uh, as far as the build goes, it's not going to be that hard, is it? Uh, it's really straightforward. So the only thing you could probably screw up is putting the motor mount in the wrong way round. Because you'll see on the bottom there's a little hole piece down there on the bottom. Just need to make sure that that sits in the right way round. Besides that, that's the only thing which I think could be screwed up in this build. The rest of it is kind of straightforward. It's the Normally, I would moan my arse off about having plastic parts to hold wings on uh, and what a weakness that would be. But then again, I've seen Austin's model uh, and I know how much abuse that model has been received. And his wings are still on and the plastic pieces have not broken, so hey ho! It must be strong enough, in, in, in this model at least. Anyway, it's time for me to wrap up. Uh, I will go on and get this one built. I don't think don't, it's not like I said, it's not a complex build. Bit of glue, uh, and we're away. Stick a motor on the back, ESC, and two servos, uh, and we're pretty much good to fly. It's, it's what's it? A three on complexity because you've got to glue the fuse and the motor mount in. Three out of ten. It's pretty straightforward to say the least. Uh, I don't think there's much more which I can say. If so, with that said, it's time for me to go. If you have any questions about this model, please just ask in the comments section underneath this video. Remember, bought out of my own money for my own abuses, and I can assure you we will be abusing this one. As always, would you expect any less? Uh, and it's time for me to go. So with that said for myself, Matt, thank you for taking the time to watch this episode. Remember, you can hit the subscribe button if you'd like to follow along the journey uh, with this model. Uh, if you like, so you can catch the maiden and when we go out in a flyer FPV, etc. etc. If you want to stay up to date with the build progress on this wing, then let's make more words out. In the video description, there's a link to the Facebook group called The Ragnar Nuts Off. Uh, click the uh, join button on the top right hand side. Uh, one of us will pick up your request and I'll be posting photographs as we go through the build on this one. Uh, and yeah, with that said, it's time for me to go. For myself, Matt, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video, and I'll see you again shortly. Cheerios!